All right. Well, good. All right. Well, good evening. Thank you for being here again um, by way of internet. And so we're going to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do come before you this evening. We thank you for this midweek service and for the opportunity to be here in the house of God, but also to be joining our family uh, in their living rooms or wherever they may be tuning in as far as the internet is concerned. I pray, God, that you bless us tonight. I pray that your will will be done and we give you the honor and glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, we're going to start off with uh, page number 30 in the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymns, page number 30, Nothing But the Blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. All right, next is page 175. It's just like God, or it's just like his great love. Page number 175. <clears throat> A friend I have called Jesus, whose love is strong and true, and never fails however is tried, no matter what I do. I've sinned against this love of His, but when I knelt to pray, Confessing all my guilt to him, the sin clouds rolled away. It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like his great love. Sometimes the cloud of trouble bedim the sky above. I cannot see my Savior's face. I doubt his wondrous love. But he from heaven's mercy seat, beholding my despair, in pity burst the clouds between and shows me he is there. 
It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like his great love. When sorrow clouds o'ertake me and break upon my head, when life seems worse than useless and I were better dead, I take my grief to Jesus then, nor do I go in vain. For heavenly hope he gives that cheers Like sunshine after rain It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day It's just like Jesus all along the way It's just like his great love Oh, I could sing forever of Jesus' love divine, of all his care and tenderness for this poor life of mine. His love is in and over all, and wind and waves obey. When Jesus whispers, peace be still, and rolls the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like his great love. Thank you, Haley. Amen. Well, do be in prayer for each other. I'll give a couple announcements here before we get into our time of prayer. Uh, don't forget about Saturday, December the 12th, uh, from, two to, uh, from 2 to 6 o'clock p.m. at uh, 711 Central Avenue, uh, Suite 102. Uh, that's going to be the Forbid Them Not Christmas Open House. And so do, um, if you haven't made that, uh, made those plans, if you've not put that on your calendar, please do so. Saturday, December 12th. And if there's any change in that, of course, Ms. Rachel's going to let us know. Uh, but Saturday, December 12th, Lord willing, if nothing changes or nothing happens, uh, December 12th uh, from 2 to 6 o'clock p.m., the uh, Christmas open house for Forbid Them Not Ministries. Then on December the 13th, we are planning on opening back up for in-person services here at Grace Baptist Church, December the 13th on that Sunday, that Lord's Day. And uh, we will have full services as far as Sunday school, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock for our worship service, and then, of course, uh, Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. And uh, the 13th will be the second Sunday of the month, which is our potluck Sunday. And uh, so we will be having soups and sides and scrumptious desserts uh, after that service on the 13th. Until then, we'll be having the online services uh, just because of the amount of sickness that has been going through our families uh, within the church. And so that's why we're uh, meeting in this manner uh, for online only services. Other than that, uh, we'd be right here in the house of God. And so uh, you pray that everyone gets better and um, be praying for this coming Sunday for the online services uh, and then uh, pray for the 13th when we're able to come back together. Uh, we do have much to be praying for. Of course, uh, as we mentioned, do be much in prayer for all of those that are going through sicknesses, a uh, lot that is going through families, but also individuals. And uh, so please pray for them. Uh, um, there has been some that uh, has tested positive for COVID and some that are just going through uh, some normal virus, colds and flu type of uh, symptoms. And so um, just pray for one another. Uh, do have a word of praise and uh, with it a prayer request as well. Um, heard from the Stones family earlier 
And it sounds like that everything is lined up for the adoption to finally take place. And uh, they're preparing to move. So um, that's going to be the downside of that for us. But we are grateful and we do praise the Lord that things are falling into place uh, for them and their family. And so you pray for them as... um, as this adoption goes through and then as they make their preparations to move. And it looks like they'll probably be moved before we come back together, uh, which is, um, uh, which is sad uh, that we, that many of you are not going to be able to say goodbye personally. Um, but, um, but please pray for them. We're going to certainly miss them. We've enjoyed having them here, uh, in our services. Uh, but we're, we, uh, we know that they got to do what the Lord has, um, want that wants them to do. So, Amen. Um, And then continue to pray for our nation. Uh, Still a lot of uncertainty and and that sort of thing as far as our nation is concerned. And the next administration that will be taking office um, in January, uh, whether that be um, President Trump again or uh, Biden, uh, one way or another, uh, we still need to bathe it a lot in prayer. And uh, so be much in prayer for our nation. Uh, Pray for our missionaries and uh, for those that we support monthly uh, financially, but also uh, some friends of ours uh, that have passed through this church that we may not support financially, but uh, we do um, in our prayers. And so remember them. And uh, I think that's... I think that's all at the moment, and uh, so let's just bow together and uh, where you're at, and uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do uh, come before you tonight, and Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for being so good to us. We thank you for being the one and true living God. Uh, Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord, that you know what's best for us even when we don't have a clue. And, uh, Father, I pray that your will would be done above and beyond our own will, above and beyond what we want for our own lives, God. We pray that you'd help us to submit ourselves to you and for what you would have for our lives. We know, God, that deep down in our hearts, if we would be honest, uh, that even though what you have in store for us may may not be what we have had planned for ourselves, and even though we can't really picture what uh, our lives would be like, Um, But, Lord, we know, if we'd just be honest, uh, that you have far better in store for us in your plans that we could ever have in our own. And uh, I know we can't see that in the present, but I pray that you'd help us to, by faith, submit ourselves to you. And, uh, Lord, I do say that. I request this prayer uh, for myself personally, but also for all the adults of Grace Baptist Church. Uh, But, Lord, I pray that also for our young people, Uh, and I pray that you would help them to come to the point in their life where they freely submit themselves to you, Uh, not because of what mom and dad would want them to do, but because it's what you would want them to do. And, uh, Father, I pray that you'd help them to make a personal decision on their own, not only uh, to trust Christ as their Savior, but to live for you. Uh, Lord, they're going to have a they already got a lot of pressure, Lord, and it's only going to increase upon them uh, to live by the world standards and uh, to go the way of the world. But I pray that you'd help them to determine in their hearts, uh, Lord, through all the temptation, through all the peer pressure, that they are going to submit themselves to you and live for you, God. We need some godly young people uh, to be raised up in this generation. And uh, Lord, we're going to need it. And so, Father, I pray, and at the same time, I pray for your protection upon our young people. I pray, God, that you would help them and that you would protect them, that you'd lead God, direct them, Father, in all that they do, and help us as adults to be the examples to them that we ought to be. Help us to be right ourselves with you and to live in a manner that would point them uh, to a service, a lifetime of service uh, to the one and true living God. Father, I do pray for your forgiveness. Lord, we fail you, and we fail you often. Lord, as a people, as a nation, and even as a church, a lot of times, God, we fail you. And so, Father, I pray that your will be done in our lives, and I pray that you would have mercy upon us and your grace would be bestowed in a tremendous way. Forgive us where we fail you. Forgive us where we fall short. We confess, Lord, that we still dwell in the 
uh, in the flesh, and the flesh has and will fail you. But we're so grateful, Father, that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We're so grateful for the advocate that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for the blood that has been shed and, uh, Lord, the pardon that has been made because of that blood. And I pray that you'd help us to live a life that is pleasing to you. It's the least that we can do, Father. And, Lord, I do pray, Lord, for those that are sick and afflicted. Lord, you know our bodies. And, uh, Lord, you are the great physician. I am grateful for modern technology and for the doctors and the uh, great amount of knowledge and wisdom that you've given mankind as far as medical um, uh, issues are concerned, but God, you are the great p physician, and I pray that you'd bring healing to our families and individuals within our church. And uh, Lord God, for even extended families, Lord, I know that prayer requests have come across the prayer chain here recently, Father, with uh, family members that n not necessarily even in this state, but uh, members of our church and their, their extended family that's going through uh, difficult times and, and sicknesses as well. Please be with them, Lord, and, uh, and help and heal, Father, in a way that only you can. I'm so grateful for Pastor Spilger and for the report there and uh, that the surgery went well, and I pray you that you continue to bring healing there in that family. Uh, Lord, such a precious man of God, and I pray that you'd continue to help him in his body, that he may have many more years of service uh, in, uh, in, on this earth. And Lord, I do pray for our nation. I pray, God, for our country and the current situation that we're in. And um, Lord, we have certainly seen some strange days here recently, God, and it doesn't look like that's going to get any different. Um, but Lord, we do pray that you'd help us as a nation. I pray, God, for a great revival upon our nation, Lord. We desperately need revived. And uh, Lord, I believe that anything's possible with you. Father, we could look on the negative and we could say there's no chance for revival, but uh, I believe that we would be limiting what you are able to do if um, we would humble ourselves and seek your face and pray and turn from our wicked ways. And uh, Lord, I pray that your will would be done in this nation. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for this word of God. And I pray that you'd help us as we hold the Word of God, as we read the Word of God, as we stand upon the Word of God, help us to hide it in our hearts so we may not sin against you. Help us to not take for granted the fact that we do have the Word of God, not just a form of your Word, not just um, something that contains the Word of God, but is the Word of God. God breathed, God inspired. And uh, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to not take that for granted. Help us not to take for granted the fact that we have it in our language, that it's readily available to us, knowing that there's people across this world and other parts of this world that don't have the printed copy of the Word of God in their language. And Lord, could not read John 3.16 if they wanted to. Lord, we've been given a great precious privilege in having this Word of God in our language, the common man's language, the English language. Help us to not take it for granted but help us to hold it dear and precious to us. Lord, we understand that to whomsoever much is given of him shall much be required. And I pray that you'd help us to be found faithful in your word. And Lord, we ask all this in the precious name, the name that is above every name, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, Proverbs chapter number three. And uh, we... It has been a couple of weeks due to various reasons. Uh, there's been a couple of uh, a couple of times I was not able to be in the pulpit for uh, sickness and other reasons, and then we've had guest preachers, and so it's been a little bit since we have uh, since we last uh, looked at Proverbs chapter number three. And so I want to give just a little bit of uh, an introduction where we left off. We're in Proverbs chapter 3. We're at the end, the last three verses of this chapter, uh, chapter 33, or verse number 33, 34, and 35. And the Bible says, The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. 
So in these last three verses, um, we, uh, we said that there is, these three verses contain principles of wisdom, principles of wisdom. And a principle in this context is defined as a general truth, a law comprehending many subordinate truths as the principles of morality, of law, of government, etc. So it's a general law, a law or general truth rather, a law comprehending many subordinate truths. And that's what we find in these last three verses, the principles of wisdom. Principles are important in all areas of life or at least they should be. And we ended last time with this introduction to these three verses. We ended with an exhortation of some spiritual principles, just kind of as an example of what we're talking about when we're talking about these principles. But uh, we ended with an exhortation of some spiritual principles that someone pointed out as in a devotion out of Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 2. Isaiah 43, 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And so from that verse, again, this is just kind of an, an example, uh, pointing out these principles and how they important they are, not only in our physical lives, but in spiritually as well. So these are the four principles that were pointed out of this verse uh, in this uh, devotion. It says, nobody, number one, nobody is exempt from difficult times. Nobody is exempt from difficult times. The verse begins with the word when difficult times comes, not if. The phrases, passeth through the waters and walketh through the fire, are sort of poetic, poetic references to difficult times we all face in life. Think of them as waters of suffering and fires of adversity. No one is immune from these challenges of life. Either you've been in one, you are in one now, or you're going to be in one. Nobody, principle number one, out of Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number two, number one, nobody is exempt from difficult times. Number two, God promises to be with us, especially during difficult times. So it is a principle that we're not exempt from difficult times, but at the same time, the next principle is God promises to be with us, especially during difficult times. Just as he promised in many other scriptures, he says here, I will be with thee. Principle number three, God promises protection. He says that those waters of suffering will not overwhelm you, neither will those fires of adversity consume you or even burn you. Principle number three. Principle number four, the trial is temporary. The verse, gives, uh, the verse gives us God's assurance that our trial is just for a season. His word refers to passing through the waters and to walking through the fire. It won't last forever. And I can say from experience, it is much easier to hang in there under the weight of the trial when you know God is with you and that he's protecting you. So in summary, in this devotion here, the summary, the principles that God wants us to live by consist of these things. There will be difficult times in our life. Of course, we probably already know that. <laughs> in case you didn't, though, there's going to be difficult times in our lives. But God is always with you. If you're his child, if you're saved by the grace of God, you've been washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. God is with you always, even when you're going through a difficult time. In fact, God is never nearer than when trouble has come. And uh, not only that, God will protect you. You, will ha you do have a free will. That is true. Therefore, you have to make the first move. You have to ask. But he will be with you. He will protect you. And then lastly, it will not last forever. Notice how it refers to passing through the waters, through the rivers, or through the fire. Uh, your trial won't go on indefinitely. It's just for a season. And seasons always change. And so when we come to these last three verses of Proverbs chapter number three, that's what we find in each one of these verses, principles, principles of wisdom. And so we're going to cover verse number 33 tonight and the first principle that we find in these last three verses, and that is the principle of retribution, the principle of retribution. 
Retribution is defined as the dis distribution of rewards and punishments at the general judgment. So the distribution of rewards and punishments. Sometimes when we think about the word retribution, we only think about it in the negative sense as far as punishment goes. But it can include uh, rewards as well. Retribution is the distribution, the handing out of rewards and punishments. So in this principle of retribution, you might say in this general truth, right? That's what a principle is, a general truth. In this general truth of the distribution of rewards and punishments of verse number 33, we find two primary divine retributions as we notice, number one, the condemned by God. The condemned by God. Now, this is the principle of retribution. And retribution is the distribution of rewards and punishments. And so the first one we see is the condemned by God. The Bible says in verse number 33, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. That's a principle, a principle of retribution. The curse of the Lord. That already sounds terrible. Uh, the curse of the Lord. Think about that for just a moment. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Now, I do want to say this, that God is a good God. And he's good all the time. There's not a time ever that he's not good. He is good all the time. God is a holy God. He's, he's holy all the time. There's not a time that he isn't holy or he ceases to be holy. He's holy all the time. God is a righteous God. And there's not a time that he ceases to be righteous. He's always righteous. And then God is a just God. All the time God is just. There's not a time that he ceases to be a just God. Now, all of those, the fact that God is a good God, that, that God is a holy God, a righteous God, a just God, all of those are immutable qualities of the one and true living God. The, they're unchangeable. Uh, the immutable qualities of the one and true living God, each quality being just as true and just as unchangeable as the other. So when we say that God is a just God, because he is all the time, there's not a time he doesn't, he, that he isn't just, he is just all the time. When we say that God is a just God, we really need to understand what just means in that context. So when we say that God is a just God, it is in reference to justice. It is in reference to the, uh, and, and I say justice, justice as in virtue, which consists in giving to everyone what is his due. That's what justice is. The virtue which consists in giving to everyone. No respecter of persons. That's, that's who our God is. He is no respecter of persons. He is a just God. The virtue which consists in giving to everyone what is his due. Practical conformity to the laws and to the principles of rectitude in the dealings of men with each other. It also means impartiality. Going back to that being no respecter of persons. It is impartiality. That's what just means. Impartiality. Equal distribution of right in expressing opinions, fair representation of facts, representing merit or demerit. It is vindictive retribution, merited punishment. That's what justice is. That's what it means when we're talking about that he is a just God. He, it is dealing with the justice part of God. And that doesn't change. And he is just. And not only is he a just God, but he's a just God all the time. He doesn't cease to be unjust. He's always just. And so people that don't understand the word of God, people that don't understand, um, you know, the uh, uh, 
the principles and the uh, foundations of faith uh, in our Christian faith, uh, whenever people make a statement such as God would be an unfair God to send people to hell. They really do not understand or comprehend the, the fact that God is a just God. He's a just God. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a good God. All the time, he is every one of those things. And so, as we mentioned before, it doesn't have to do with God being mean or unjust in any way uh, by allowing somebody to die and go to hell. Um, they have made that decision. They are the ones that have sinned against the holy God. And God has done everything that he possibly could to redeem mankind back to him. He paid the ultimate price in sending his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sin of all of humanity. Jesus Christ tasted death for every man. So he is a just God. And he doesn't ever cease to be just. He's always just. And the Bible tells us here that a principle, one of the principles of wisdom is that the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Now, see, the wicked may think that they're getting away with their wickedness. But according to Proverbs, and, and, and as we mentioned before concerning our nation, the reason why there's uncertainty is because, uh, you know, of course, President Trump is, and his team are still um, trying to, uh, you know, bring these lawsuits, trying to, to find out the truth. Uh, was, there, uh, was there fraud in the election and uh, so on and so forth? And what they're wanting is justice. They're wanting truth to be known. They're wanting the truth to come out, to be revealed. Uh, if there was, if there wasn't, whatever. Justice is what they're after. Hopefully, anyway. And, um, <clears throat> you know, regardless of what has happened, you know, the wicked may think that they're getting away with their wickedness, but according to Proverbs chapter 15 and verse number 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. There's some things we may never find out upon this earth. There's a lot of secrets our country holds that we will never know. Somebody knows. I venture to say that somebody um, and uh, probably a group of people knows exactly what happened uh, whenever um, President Kennedy was assassinated. But we don't know. There's all kinds of conspiracy theories. There's all kinds of documentaries, but nobody knows the actual truth. Or at least the common person doesn't. But God does. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. God knows exactly what has happened in this election. God knows everything that is taking place. They may think they're getting away with their wickedness, but God knows. And we're told in our text that the curse of the Lord is in their house. This once again brings a stark reminder that what we do does matter and what we do does affect others. <clears throat> I've made that statement many, many times, and it's convicting every time that I make it. What we do does matter, and what we do does affect others. I'll give you a couple of examples here. I thought about the wickedness of Achan and the repercussions from his wickedness. Joshua chapter number one, of course, in Joshua chapter number six, uh, you know, they've they're entering the, they're starting to enter the promised land. They've come to their first obstacle, which was Jericho. God's given them a great deliverance. <clears throat> Joshua chapter 7 and verse number 1, But the children of Israel committed to trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Joshua chapter number 7 and verse number 5. There is... Uh, there's consequences for Achan's sin, not just for Achan, but for others as well. What we do does matter, and what we do does affect others. They've come to their second obstacle, which was Ai. And the Bible says, and the men of Ai, which by the way, should have been a cakewalk for the children of Israel. They were, it should have been easy, uh, an easy battle for them. 
And the and, and the, the Bible says, but the men of Ai smote them about thirty six men, for they chased them before the gate unto Shebarim and smote them in the going down wherein uh, whereof the hearts of the people melted and became as water. They were unproductive, and as a matter of fact, they lost some lives, all because of Achan's sin. What you do does matter, and what you do does affect others. Joshua chapter 7 and verse number 24. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold, and his sons, that always, that's always a, uh, a heartbreaking part to come to in that verse. It's bad enough because they've got to destroy sin from the camp. Okay, Achan has got to face the consequences, and it's going to be death. But the saddest part of that is it's not only going to be Achan, it's going to be his family. The Bible says they took Achan, they took the silver, they took the Babylonian garment, they took the wedge of gold that he had hid under his tent. But not only that, the Bible says they took his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them into the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The fire, um, the Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones of this day. So the Lord turned the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place is called the valley of Acre unto this day. Um... Tragic, just tragic. What you do does matter, and what you do does affect others. I say what we do does matter, and what we do does affect others. And the Bible says that uh, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. I'll give you another example. 2 Kings chapter number 20. Uh, 2, Kings, uh, 2 Kings chapter number 20. This is dealing with Hezekiah. And um, Hezekiah had been sick, and uh, they, uh, of course, he was going to die. Begged to the Lord. The Lord gave him an extension of 15 years. So after that he had been sick, there is a representative from the king of Babylon that comes to bring presents and, uh, and basically, uh, you know, uh, to console him after his sickness and the Bible says in verse number 13, And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. And there was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto the king Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men and from whence came they uh, to see thee, uh, to, unto thee? And Hezekiah said they were come from far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in, the, in thy house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left saith the Lord. Now, that's bad enough already, okay? I mean, this is, um, this is because of his pride or whatever you want to call it for allowing him to see uh, all the treasures, but it doesn't end there. What we do does matter and what we do does affect others. The Bible says the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wickedness. And the Bible says in verse number 18, and thy sons that shall issue from thee which thou shalt beget. They shall, they shall take away, or shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. And he said, Is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? I don't know of a more selfish statement to, that is made in the word of God than that. So it is a principle. It is a principle in, uh, of, uh, of retribution. 
the condemned by God. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Now you contrast that with an example here of Acts chapter 16, verse number 30. The Bible says, and brought them out and says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? This is the Philippian jailer. And uh, he has asked Paul and Silas what he needs to do to be saved. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And thy house. What we do does matter. And what we do does affect others. And, um, and they, they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all of his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. That's a pretty big contrast between uh, the curse of the Lord being the house of the wicked and the blessing of the Lord being the house, I would say, of the just or the righteous. So we see, first of all, this first uh, primary divine retribution. And we see the condemned by God. But then the second primary retribution here is the, comm the commended by God. The commended by God. So we are told in, um, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 33, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but... He blesseth, he blesseth the habitation of the just, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. John Butler said this. He said that God smiles on the righteous. Uh, on the righteous, men do not honor righteousness unless public pressure demands it. God smiles on the righteous. Men do not honor righteousness unless public pressure demands it. Persecution manifests the attitude of man toward righteousness. However, God favors and blesses what man often opposes. The righteous. And I'll give you an example. In Genesis chapter number 6, Genesis chapter number 6 and verse number 9, that's Exodus, Genesis chapter number 6. And verse number 9, these are the generations of Noah. The Bible said Noah was a just man and perfect in, all, in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, and the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make in the ark, and a and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and every living thing that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. Thou shalt be male and female. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. But, the Bible says, he blesseth the habitation of the just. And I believe that we can see the beginning of that uh, whenever the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5, and God saw the wickedness, or God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man in the earth, and it grieved him in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created off the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 
but he blesseth the habitation of the just. I'll give you another example. In Job, Job chapter 42, in verse number 10 through 13, of course, we understand all that had happened to Job and the lengthy process that he took with his three friends and, and uh, then the, the lengthy process that, that God took with him. And, and, uh, but in the end, Job chapter 42, verse number 10 through 13, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he had prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came, there, uh, then came there unto him all his brethren and his sisters and they that had been his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters. But the Lord blesseth the habitation of the just. I'll give you yet another example here in David. The Bible said in Acts chapter 13, verse 21 and 22, And afterward they desired a king, and God gave them, or God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. The Bible says that the, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. And uh, if, you look at, if you look at 1 Kings... And uh, chapter number 11, 1 Kings chapter number 11, we see that David, of course, is a very special man, but the fact that the, uh, he blesseth the habitation of the just, even in the punishment that was handed down to King Solomon, because we know the end of his life didn't end well. We know that those, uh, that those strange women, his, his wives, all those wives and his concubines that he had taken in, they turned his heart away from, from his God. And so there's punishment that's being handed down to Solomon. But even in that punishment, we see God's mercy extended on the behalf, not of Solomon, but on the behalf of the servant that was a man after God's own heart, which was David, Solomon's father. Now, 1 Kings chapter number 11 and verse number 9, the Bible said, And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. And he commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For so much as is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant, my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it uh, to thy servant, notwithstanding. In, the, in thy days I will not do it. Why? For David thy father's sake, not for his, not for Solomon's, but for David's sake. But I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Verse 13, Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And then in verse number 31, the Bible says this, And he stood, and he said to Jeroboam, Take these ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give, it to the, and will give ten tribes uh, to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of the tribe of Israel. Because of David's sake, even in the punishment handed down to Solomon, the Bible says, I mean, it's a principle. That's what we're talking about, the principles of wisdom. It's a principle that we find in uh, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 33. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Now, we read earlier what the Apostle Paul had to say about David in Acts chapter 13, verse 21 and 22. 
I'll remind you. And afterward, they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Now we see that God's hand of mercy was even extended during the time of Solomon's punishment. But now to put the cherry on top, consider the rest of what the Apostle Paul had to say about God's man in Acts chapter 13 and verse 23. Verse 22 says that he's found David, the son of Jesse, a man of my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Verse 23 said, of this man's seed, of David's seed, hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Now, you talking about a principle. The Bible said the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. The wicked may think they're getting away with their wickedness. But God sees, God's eye beholds everything, the good and the evil. They're not getting away with it. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. That's what the Bible says, the principle of wisdom. But, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Now you tell me how big of a blessing could a man get than out of this man's seed came the Savior of humanity came the Redeemer of Israel, came the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now that's a principle, friend. He blesseth the, how, the habitation of the just. So we see these two primary retributions. Retributions can be a reward or a punishment. And so the question is, which retribution would you prefer? <laughs> I know that's a... That's a, that's a silly question, really. Who in the world would, would say that they would want the retribution of the curse of the Lord being the house of the wicked? But the reality is there's a lot of people that have chosen that road. So I would much rather have the habitation or have the, uh, the Lord blessed the habitation of the just. That would be a far better retribution, wouldn't it? Well, thank you for being with us tonight. Do be much in prayer for the services, 10 or 11 o'clock rather, Sunday morning for our second Sunday of the online services uh, to give people a chance to get well, get over the sicknesses. And so 11 o'clock Sunday morning, 6 o'clock Sunday uh, evening. And uh, then we're looking forward to the 13th. Don't forget about the open house for Forbid Them Not, uh, the Christmas open house on the 12th um, and on that Saturday. And so we appreciate you, church. We love you and miss you. And again, if you need anything, please let me know. And we'll close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together tonight. Thank you for this word of God. Thank you for the words of warning. And I pray that, uh, Lord, that there, if there has been anyone that has listened tonight or will listen into the future, uh, Lord, that, um, that has never accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, I do pray, Lord, with everything that I've got tonight, um, Lord, that you would help them to come to the understanding that they too can be redeemed, that they too can be saved, that they don't have to go to that place called hell. But if they would turn from their wicked way, they would print of their sins, and, and uh, Father, they would call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as the payment of their sins. And uh, I pray that they'd be saved before it's everlasting too late. And Father, for those of us that are saved, I pray that you'd help us to take what we've heard tonight to heart. Lord, what we do does matter and what we do does affect others. And we would be foolish to say we would not want God's blessing upon our life. It's a principle, though, that we find a principle of wisdom that he blesses the habitation of the just, of the just. And I pray that you'd help us to be a we know that you are a just God all the time. Pray that you'd help us to be a just people. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Help us again as a church family. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to get over the sicknesses, Lord, that's been going through our families. And I pray, Lord, that uh, we would be brought back together as soon as possible. And Lord, we'll give you praise, honor, and glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night.